there's nothing wrong with the church of Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. But you know as well as I do that there are many in our midst who are sick. Now the question now, as far as the prophet Malachi is concerned, the question is, now what can my faith get me? Folks, that question is gone. This, this idea, what can Christ do for me next? What miracle will he perform for me now? That's not the question. The question now is, how shall I stand before Christ? How shall I stand at the judgment? Who shall stand, the prophet said, who shall stand when he appears? The question no longer is, how do I feel? How do I get happiness? How do I get the desire of my heart? That's not the question of the hour now. Folks, the question of the hour is, how can I withstand that moment I stand before the judgment seat of Christ? How do I withstand that hour when I've lived carelessly, when I've been so selfish, and I've neglected this great salvation? Am I going to stand on that judgment day? That's the question. The issue now is, have I neglected Christ in this midnight hour? Has he been calling me and calling me and I've been turning him away? It's not a matter now of miracles and casting out devils and healing the sick or demonstrating power, but am I pure in the sight of God because it's possible to do all these things and the Lord say to you on that day, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never even knew you. Never knew you. That's not a handful. That's a whole class of society he's talking about. People who did mighty works in his name. The purge is going to begin in the pulpit. The purge is already begun in the pulpit. He shall purify the sons of Levi. And how's he going to do that? By turning up the heat. He's going to turn up the heat, gentlemen, on all of us. He's going to make things so hot, so intense, God's men are going to be driven to their knees. This is the fire of the Holy Ghost, but it's the fire of persecution. It's the fire of tribulation, the fire of rebellion, the fire of unbelievable hardships, ridicule, gossip, financial problems. He's going to shake, the Holy Ghost is going to shake everything that can be shaken. Even our faith is going to be shaken and tested in this fire. If God's men will not come back to him willingly, he'll do it sovereignly. And I believe he's here to do a new thing in our midst. He's come now as a refiner of fire, of silver. He's in his holy place now, heating the fire seven times hot, and we are all going into this crucible. I know people don't like it when I talk about the coming persecution and trial. They don't like to hear preachers preach that, because we've got itching ears, and we become so, so me conscious. We don't like to hear people come along and prick us with this kind of preaching. But you better believe it, folks. You better believe it. We are going in hard times and persecution before Jesus comes. We're going into a crucible because he comes now as we find our silver. No one's going to escape the purging. God's determined to get all the dirt out of us. He wants a holy priesthood. He's going to sever us from our backslidings. He's going to sever us from our worldliness. He's going to sever us from our secret sins. Hey, look, I'm not castigating the ministry. These are my brothers and all through the audience. These are holy men of God. And I believe, like me, they're hungry for holiness. And I suppose I need this more than any man in this place. Because I feel the past nine months i felt the white hot heat of testing. God has been scrubbing me down. He's been working on some ugly spots in my life. And oh, if you have a heart for God, any man in this place has been on his knees. Any man or woman has been praying. Watch out. John the Baptist didn't see Jesus coming as a divine Santa Claus. He saw him coming with an axe in one hand and a fan in the other. And the axe is laid to the roof and the fan would blow out all the chaff and leave only the weed. going to spread from the pulpit to the pew. You better get ready, saints. All you Holy Ghost people, get ready. He's getting ready to expose all your secret sins. All adultery. All foolishness. Because when he, the Holy Ghost, comes, he will what? He will reprove the world of sin. And I am 
one of those who don't... I, I do not believe we've seen yet the fullness of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We've only seen a few sprinkles because when the Holy Ghost comes and pours out His Spirit upon all flesh, there will be a general conviction of sin around the world. Men and women will tremble in the presence of the Holy Ghost. If we had the true fullness of the Holy Ghost, nobody in the house could sit comfortably in their sins. They'd fall on their knees in His presence. How are you going to play games when he throws you in the fire and everything around you is boiling? How do you stay lukewarm? The Holy Ghost is going to put some fire in your baptism. <laughs> the old Malachi said, The day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn... The day that cometh shall burn. There's another part of this prophecy that blesses me. God has promised that along with the purge in his house, he's going to start pulling down the strongholds of the devil. I have never believed that God would turn a whole generation over to drugs and sex and alcohol and abandon them to the devil. I have never believed that the Lord would sit by and do nothing about all the divorcing and the breaking up of our homes. I've never believed that the Lord will let that go by very long without doing something about it. Amen. And God said he's about to do something about it. God's getting ready to trample on the drug and alcohol problem in our schools. And I tell you honestly, if, if I have never heard anything else from God, I know I have heard this. We are on the brink of the greatest outpouring of God's Spirit in our high schools America's ever seen. There's revival coming to our schools. praying man down in Texas, 100 miles from me, gets sick and tired of all the drugs and alcohol in the school. He started fasting and praying. Last I heard, 300 were saved in the whole school. All the drugs and alcohol is gone. God killed it overnight. And here he is. Here's the promise. And I will come near to you in judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. Those are the drug pushers, the sorcerers and against the adulterers, and against the false swears, and all that turn away the stranger from his right, and all who fear me not, said the Lord of hosts. I'm coming to my church. I'm coming back to send judgment on sin. And God is going to deal sovereignly, folks. Oh, I, I, I could, I'm, I'm leaving in a week or two to spend the summer in the streets of New York and Los Angeles and Washington and Philadelphia. And folks, there's such an excitement. We're taking 1,500 workers, and there's such an excitement. I can hardly sleep because while people are talking about how dark the age is, the Holy Spirit is going right on down the street, and hundreds and hundreds, even homosexuals are being converted. Some of those who are in drag, drag queens, are getting saved and preaching the gospel now around the country. I can name three outstanding drag queens. God just now saved one of those drag queens down in New Orleans a few months ago, and what an anointing he has now. Totally delivered. He's going to do something about this problem, folks. Before he comes, he's coming back. After a display of his power, he's going to let the devil and the whole world know who has the power. Now, if God's going to do everything the prophet said he's going to do, we've got some glorious things coming ahead. He, listen, listen to it. He said he's going to purge and purify the preachers, the ministers, and the evangelists. He's going to purify them. All the chaff, he said, they won't even have a congregation. He's going to put them aside, put them on the shelf. They're going to be burned out mountains. He said he's going to call his church back to repentance and holiness. He's going to see a people offering praises and true righteousness. He's going to bring a revival to our young people. Drug strongholds are coming down. Alcohol and divorce will no longer be controlled in America when Jesus comes. Oh, there'll be two streams, the wicked going this way and the righteous this way. But God's going to give a sign, a tremendous sign to this world of his overcoming power. A marvelous display. He said there's going to be a sound of prayer again in his house, intercession. People are going to discern between the holy and the profane. God's people are going to go back to his word. Christ is going to come again. 
and reveal to the church a new kind of prosperity preaching. And I believe there's a new kind of prosperity preaching already being preached in the land. It's moving away from anything that's material. And it's coming now to revelate to the true riches of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praying patient. It's out of print. 1820, 1806, I think it was. Presbyterian pastor, one of the great praying saints of God in American history. Praying patient in the middle of a great depression in America at that time, just 30 years after the Declaration of Independence. He wrote a letter to his mother. He said, Dear Mother, the depression is so severe in Portland that all the businesses have failed. Men are committing suicide because they have no Christ to support themselves. The poor houses are filled. He said people are being scattered to the four winds. He said almost all the people, especially the young married couples, have lost their homes in my church. But he said, Mother, don't say poor Edward, say blessed Edward, because in these hard times, even though I have only pennies to live on and can't afford to get married, he said God has been revealing the true riches of the glory of God in Christ Jesus. And he said this, Mother, my people are taking joyfully the spoiling of their goods. He said, my prayer is, and listen to this, folks, how different from what we've been hearing in these last days. He said, Mother, it's my prayer that if God has any material blessings in store for me, he would be pleased to turn them into spiritual ones instead. If God has anything material in store for me, would he be pleased to give me his grace instead? Turn them into spiritual blessings. Now, folks, I don't have a heavy burden to lay on you tonight. Because Christ didn't come to condemn us, but to save us. And, and just like you, I'm struggling with temptation and trial, weakness and times of disobedience. And to tell you the truth, I have read more books on theology in the last year than I have in my whole lifetime combined. I've gone through all the Puritan writers. I've gone through all the, the great holiness preachers. I've gone through Wesley. I've gone through it all. And even though my heart is so hungry, and I pull over the scriptures, I tell you honestly, I don't understand all the doctrines about holiness and righteousness and purity. I don't understand this great conflict between Calvin and Armenian. I don't know anything about these great doctrines that I could dispute with you about. And the more I read sometimes, the less I feel I know. And I think like Zwingli, I feel, oh God, I have to put it all aside. And just like Paul say, I've determined to know nothing among you, said Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I don't know all those doctrines. And I don't want to lay a heavy burden on you. And I'm not standing here telling you I'm a great praying man because the last nine months God has shown me that he's been putting me back to prayer and fasting. How far away I've gotten from all of that. Uh, international pulpit. I used to walk the streets and cry. I'd get on the Staten Island ferry and I'd cry and hundreds of people look at me like a crazy man but I looked over that Brooklyn skyline and I cried for hours. I walked the streets of Harlem and I cried that I prayed. When I drove my car I had to stop and pray. I had a hunger. And when I stood in the pulpit God's word was hard. But we get away. My altars were full. But there was a contradiction at the center. I hadn't fasted in 20 years. First two years in New York I fasted. And I prayed. And I'm telling you, thanks to God. God's going to get us back to fasting and praying. One way or another he's going to do it. I don't know much about those doctrines, but I know one thing. That Christ is the holiness I need. Christ is the righteousness I need. And the Holy Spirit that I have has come to say, David, let me do my work in you. And when the Holy Ghost is doing his work in me, I am glorifying his name. I'm being drawn back into his secret closet. I am glorifying and exalting his holy name. And 
And I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed. That every sermon I preached up to nine months ago, I don't want to even look at. Because nine months ago, God spoke to my heart and said, If you really believe that it's the end, if you really believe I'm coming, why are you playing games? Oh, God will come to us time and time again and say, Pay the price, and we go so far and we stop. And I said, God, this time I'm going all the way. I'm not going back. And I tell you now, I take time, I take days, I take weeks. I've canceled everything from August till January for five months. I'm going to shut myself in with God. Now, maybe you can't do that. And I'm not saying that to boast you. I'm telling you that I feel I need it because I don't know where I'll get in. God is trying to say something to the church of Jesus Christ. And we're so into happiness and joy. And that has its place. And that too is the work of the Holy Spirit. But can you imagine what would happen if 10,000 people would go home and pray for the two hours you spent praising Him? We would turn this world upside down if 10,000 people began to intercede tonight. God got my attention. Here's His ways. He's going to get your attention. The only power I want now is His purity. I want His righteousness, and I can't get it by anything I do. It's a gift. It's His grace. Hallelujah. It's time for cleansing. It's time for purifying. And the fire is here. Have you sensed it lately, the last few months in your heart? Hasn't there been, hasn't the Holy Ghost been saying to you what he's been saying to me and so many others? I hear from preachers all America say, Brother Dave, I don't know what it is. I've been drawn to him more than ever. I'm so restless. I'm not satisfied with what I've had. God has to do something in me and for me. Well, folks, here's one preacher not giving up till I touch God. I'm not giving up. I'm going to press in. I'm going to press in until God says something in my heart and God's trying to say that to his church. Come back to the prayer closet. The Holy Spirit is walking among us tonight. What he is saying, exalt the name of Jesus. Exalt in his presence. We really hope that this teaching has ministered to you and in some way drawn you closer to our Lord Jesus. Be sure to